Hello again and welcome to Dan White Books, the book review channel where we add insight into the worlds of literature, both for those who do read and those who don't. We're still with the classics this week with a huge book in fiction. You've no doubt heard of it before. Today we review and discuss To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. To Kill a Mockingbird is a tale about doing and knowing what is right, regardless of what others may say or do. This is a message that is perfectly personified in the tale's main character, Atticus Finch, a defence lawyer who is portrayed as the perfect role model, a good and honest man who is not afraid of self-sacrifice. Set in the 1930s, the tale is told by Atticus's younger daughter, Jean Louise Finch, who is known as Scout throughout this book. Together with her brother Jem, you discover life in Maycomb County and learn of a landmark trial that their father is soon to be a part of. The book starts off with a series of small tales that develop the two children as characters. These focus first upon a mysterious character known as Boo Radley, who the children somewhat obsess over. Locked in his house and never seen, Boo Radley is a mysterious individual who has a dozen rumours that mar him, although he's never seen in public. Atticus sees through the town chatter, instead advising the children to respect Boo and let him have space. These smaller tales throughout the start of the book not only serve as good fiction, but they also develop and help you understand the father figure and moral standing of Atticus. This in turn plays a key role in the events that follow. I won't lie, and I hate criticising the classics, the start to this book is slow and somewhat tedious, however it does set up the later parts of the story and grounds the reader to all the characters involved. It creates an immensely likeable character in Scout and in Atticus, who goes on to prove his worth not just in the words he speaks, but in the action he takes. In the second half of the book, Atticus is picked by a judge to defend the man of colour in a rape trial against a white man. He does not back down at this appointment. Atticus's kids are ridiculed at their local school for the sheer fact that Atticus is defending a black man, a thing for the time which was sort of unheard of and a, a very strange a very strange position to be in, unfortunately. Atticus brushes this criticism away though, looking only for the truth. He teaches his kids that they should not be ashamed. Atticus is not prejudiced to race or swayed by popular opinion, and aims to prove the innocence of the man he is defending, known in this book as Tom. At every turn, Atticus faces the stern opinion of others, but he does not let these affect him he knows Tom is innocent and will do what it takes to defend him. Now I've talked a lot on this channel about characters who go above and beyond to achieve what is right and what is fair, to seek justice. Despite everyone, even members of his own family criticising his decision to defend a man of colour, Atticus presses on knowing that what he's doing is correct and proper even if the people around him do not feel the same and even if society at the time does not accept it, Atticus sees through eyes that are not judging. He seeks to find justice for someone who is innocent. There are many instances throughout this book where Atticus brushes the views of others, brushes them away and sticks to his moral compass, no matter how that changes the way he is perceived by others. Great men will often do this, although of course it takes a strong moral understanding and a huge amount of bravery to do so. Acting on what one believes morally when others are dismissive is the hallmark of a good person, but also of an intelligent one. It will only be celebrated, of course, if they truly understand the difference between right and wrong, and that sums up Atticus perfectly. It's about being able to see through the smoke and mist that can be put in front of us and acting for the better of others, not just for the betterment of oneself. Atticus passes these lessons to his children. As such, they are shocked at the way Tom is ridiculed on trial and ultimately by the final verdict. To them, it is clear as day that justice has not been served, not in the slightest. 
This talk about morals, I, I hope to come back to it with further reading because, of course, what society deems morally right at the time can be completely shocking when you're sat in the position we're all in now. This is a hard statement to bear because it can allow both good and bad. It could be that people think we are wrong as we are. I mean, I feel in this present society is leaps better than the past that precedes it. It is a grave shame that such madness has been allowed to happen and it truly demonstrates just how easy and in some ways how flawed and cruel man can be. This was a difficult book review for me to write. As always, and with most classics in fiction, this is a book that gives more than a good story and in some ways that's partly why it is so famous. It points out to us how bad and corrupt things and people can be but it also shines a light on the good and I hope it will allow us in the future to remember, to criticise and to never dare go back. We have come far and books like this serve as a reminder and also teach us how to be when faced with pivotal and defining moments. Being good to one another is sometimes all we have and gives as much joy as it creates. Now I did struggle with the first half of this book. I can't lie to you, I have mentioned it, it was long, and served to ground the second half, which was brilliant, but my dislike for the start of this book cannot be ignored, and so I must reflect that in this review. With that in mind, I would rate this book an 80 out of 100 and would certainly recommend, however, I would advise you to know what you're getting into, for this book is not as easy going as others, but the experience is nonetheless highly beneficial. Let's close this book review on a powerful quote about what I'll call true empathy. I feel it's too easy these days to dismiss the concerns of others, so in the words of the great Atticus Finch himself, you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb inside of his skin and walk around in it. I would be wise to remember these words when next someone voices their hardships, because you can never truly know what it is they are going through, nor the past or present concerning them, and exactly how that relates to who they are as a person and how they truly feel in a given moment. My friends, thank you very much for watching.